Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at parallel plate capacitors, which is a topic found in the capacitance module of AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to try and understand the mechanism behind parallel plate capacitors. So if we are successful and we learn in today's lesson, you should be able to define the def define the idea of relative permittivity in the dielectric constant, calculate values of capacitance used in dielectric action, and understand the role of polar molecules in dielectric materials which forms part of the of the AQA A-level physics specification for capacitance in the parallel plate capacitor section 3.7.4.2. So, a capacitor is a device which stores electrical charge. It has a capacitance. So, a capacitor consists of two conducting plates separated by a gap. The charge imbalance on the plates produces a uniform electrical field between them. Now, the gap between the plates prevents the electrons from moving between them. This creates a charge imbalance over the two plates. And this charge imbalance causes the plates to be attracted to each other. And this produces the field which allows electrical potential energy to be stored in the capacitor. Now, it's interesting to note that this charge imbalance means that the two plates, the positive and negatively charged plates, are equally charged but oppositely charged. So what this means is that the positive charge on the positive plates was equal in magnitude to the negative charge on the negative plate. Now to maintain this attraction between the positive and negatively charged plates, electrons cannot travel from the negative plate to the positive plates. As such, the two plates must be separated by an insulator. Now, when we look through this particular idea, uh, we say that if an insulator between the plates is air or vacuum, that the charge stored by a capacitor is Q0, whilst the capacitance will be C0. Now, we can increase the capacitance or charge stored uh, by placing a greater insulator between the plates. This is because there's less chance of the electrons travelling between the plates because there's now a bigger insulator between the two plates. So this material we call the dielectric. Now, if the electrons do travel across the, the dielectric from plate to plate, we say that the dielectric is broken down. This means the capacitor can no longer store any charge. Now, we can, as we said before, we've got this idea of the dielectric. Now, examples of common dielectric materials include wax paper and polythene. Now, the increased capacitance of a capacitor after a dielectric material is inserted between the two plates is given as C, and the increased charge of the capacitor after dielectric material is inserted is given as Q. Now, the effect of adding a dielectric material to a capacitor leads to a quantity called relative permittivity. Now, this is an important idea because permittivity is the measure of how difficult it is to generate a uniform electrical field in a certain material. Now, the permittivity of free space is how difficult it is for a vacuum or air to generate a uniform electrical field, and this is a physical constant in the universe. It's the same anywhere you go in the universe. Now, we've looked at this particular idea in electrical fields, the permittivity of free space, how difficult it is for a vacuum or air to generate in a uniform electrical field field is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. Now, as, per, as permittivity is a measure of how difficult it is to generate a uniform electrical field in a certain material, the relative permittivity is how good a material is to generate an electrical field compared to how well free space generates an electrical field. So as a result, the relative permittivity will be Q over Q0, or C over C0, or E over E0. Now this value has no units because it show, it's a comparison showing the effect of the dielectric. The higher the relative permittivity, the better the insulator the dielectric material is. Now another name for the relative permittivity is called the dielectric constant. Now we've previously considered how the capacitance of a capacitor could be altered, but to understand this we've got to think about the following ideas. What mechanism is causing the electrical energy to be stored in the capacitor? How could we alter the dimensions of the capacitor to increase the electrical energy stored? Well, what could we say? That firstly, the attraction between the two plates caused by the charge imbalance produces a uniform electrical field, as there's a potential difference, and this stores the electrical potential energy in the capacitor. Now, any way to increase the attraction between the plates increases the electrical potential energy stored, because that's what's storing the energy, the attraction between the two plates. So this could include decreasing the plate separation, making the area of the plates as large as possible, and in addition, filling the space in between the plates with a stronger insulator, so that will increase the energy stored in the capacitor. 
So, as we mentioned before, the capacitor stores electrical potential energy as there's a potential difference between the plates which causes an attraction between these two plates. So you've got a positive plate which has lost electrons and a negative plate which has gained electrons and they are attracting each other. The greater the attraction, the more energy that can be stored by the capacitor, which is only true if the electrons cannot move between the plates. So as a result, there's three ways we can increase the attraction between the plates. Number one, increase the area of the plates because this will allow more charge to be stored so to provide a greater attraction. Number two, decreasing the space between the plates as this will cause a greater interaction between the two plates and as a result have a greater attraction. And finally, increasing the dielectric constant of the material because the greater the insulation, the less likely it is that the charge will travel between the two plates. Now this can be expressed mathematically by the following equation. Capacitance is equal to the area of the plates times by the permittivity of free space times by the permittivity, the relative permittivity divided by the distance between the two plates. So as you can see, these are the values which are shown in areas in meters squared and the distance between the plates is given in meters. But this equation can only be used for a parallel plate capacitor. Now what does this tell us? Number one, it tells us that the surface area of the plates and the capacitance are directly proportional to each other. But it also tells us that the distance between the plates and the capacitance are in inversely proportional which is an important idea. Now the dielectric works as they insulate the electrons from moving across the plates. Dielectrics are more effective if they actually contain polarized molecules. If the dielectrics are polarized this can actually increase the effect of the dielectric. A polarized material can increase the dielectric constant. Now when there's no charge stored by a capacitor there's no electrical field generated so the polarized molecules of the capacitor move around in random directions. Now, now a polarized molecule is a molecule that contains areas of both positive and negative charge in its structure. So at this point, because the polarized molecules of the capacitor are moving in random directions, we say the capacitor is un unpolarized. Now when the capacitor is unpolarized, the, po the polar molecules are in all different directions with no particular set orientation. Now when a capacitor is charged, you produce an electrical field. Now because the polar molecules are charged, this means that they will interact with the electrical field generated between the two plates. So the polar molecules rotate to attract the opposite the charges and because a polarized molecule contains areas of positive and negative charge the negative part of the polar molecule faces the positively charged plate and the positively charged part of the polar molecule faces the negatively charged plate so as a result the polar molecules align with the oppositely charged plates because the opposite charges attract each other however the molecules will also produce an, elect an electrical field themselves because they are also charged but this will be in the opposite direction to the electrical field of of the capacitor because the charges are the other direction to the capacitor's charge plates. So as the two electrical fields act in opposite directions and electrical field strength is a vector, this will reduce the overall electrical field in when you combine the polar molecules and the capacitor. So the electrical field produced on each plate as we know, links in to how much attraction there is because the greater the electrical field, the harder it is to place more charges on each plate. So the electrons on the negative plate would repel any more electrons that pushed, are pushed onto the negative plates and the positive charge on the, pos on the positive plate would attract the remaining electrons off that particular plate. So as a result, the opposite charge of the polar molecules can force further electron movement found in the charging process. So it allows you to place more ne electrons on that negative plate with out that extra repulsion from the existing electrons and allows more positive charge on that plate because it allows you to remove electrons from the positively charged plate. So as a result then basically you can also consider this in terms of particle interactions because the more charge can be stored because the negative side of the dielectric pushes the electrons back from the positive plate and the positive side of the dielectric molecules attracts more electrons from the battery onto the plate. As a result you can store more charge charge on the, both the positive and the negative plates and as a result in store more electrical potential energy. So what have we learned in today's lesson? That for the dielectric action in the parallel plate capacitor, C equals A times by E0 times by ER over D, which links into the relative permittivity and the dielectric constant, and you should be able to describe the action of simple polar molecules that rotate in the presence of an electrical field. 
I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson as we've looked at the definition of relative permittivity and the dielectric constant. We've looked at how you calculate the values of capacitance using dielectric action and we can hopefully understand the role of polar molecules in dielectric materials. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson looking at parallel plates capacitors which is part of the capacitance topic in AQA A-level physics and have a lovely day.